Good evening all and welcome to another video. I hope you're all well and staying safe. Once again it's another garden camp. The main theme of this video is I decided to set myself a challenge. You've probably seen sort of like these five item wild camps, ten item survival wild camps, things like that. Well I thought I'm not really going to be able to do that not yet anyway I, I feel that requires a lot more sort of survival skills bushcraft knowledge things like that so I figured if you're going wild camping you're doing you know some walking things like that you want to keep your your kit weight fairly light you, know, you don't want to be bringing loads of stuff anyway because you've got miles to cover stuff like that you want to remain fairly stealthy and I want to sort of get back into the sort of lightweight, ultra lightweight backpacking. So I set myself a limit of just 20 items. So I know what you're thinking, it sounds like a hell of a lot, but when you actually get down to it, it's it's actually not that much. Uh, but it, it allows for you to sort of bring um, like a stove and things like that. You're not reliant on having to have a fire and things like that, which at the moment in my garden, isn't really feasible so I thought 20 items is a good place to start I can work it down to 15 eventually get to 10 don't know about 5 yet that's 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 pretty tough um, so what I'll probably do is show you what 20 items I had in the morning it's about 10 o'clock now uh, needless to say I'm wearing a few of the the items already this down jacket I've got a little thermal long sleeve top on underneath my jumper which I was wearing uh, a hat and a head torch that's the only light I've got you know we're not counting uh, camera equipment in this uh, clothes on my body that I would be wearing to walk into to do a wild camp don't count either but I mean this sort of stuff I wouldn't normally wear while I'm walking anyway unless it was ridiculously cold I am also wearing some arctic uh, socks as well over my normal socks and that was also one of my 20 items as well. I'm also not counting consumables in this in this list so things like alcoholic beverages, um, water, fuel for a stove and food I'm not counting those okay I can't exactly go and kill something hunt and kill something here so you know I've got to bring food really so needless to say I've only bought like a little small eight hour ration pack uh, with me um, so I've got two litres of water I am counting the water bottles but I'm counting those as one item not two my cook set I've counted that as one so it's like whatever you can kind of fit into that that's classed as cooking so I've got Things like a, a stormproof lighter, some matches, an alcohol stove. I'm counting all of that. Um, I'm not counting the bottle of fuel, the meths, as I said, because that's a consumable. Um, I've just got my Tom Shoe titanium pots. So I've got, I've got a pen knife. I'm counting that as one of the items, even though I can fit it in the pots. So that's one of my items. As I say, it'll probably make more sense when I show you in the morning, but I thought I'd show you this now anyway. Oh, there we go. I can fit quite a lot in the mug. So, stormproof lighter. I've got some matches and some stormproof matches. And then I've got my little Trangia meth burner as well. So, yeah, I'm, I'm counting all that as one. I know that is a little bit kind of relaxing the rules, but over time as I you know pare this list down um, I can sort of be a bit strict with myself it's the first time doing it so I thought I'm gonna make it easy on myself first anyway the good thing about this is with the, this sort of like 20 item list or things like that is you know instead of having say a tarp and bivy you could have a tent uh, you could just go with a tarp if you wanted you know and just have your sleeping bag and mat underneath Personally, I like to have the bivy bag as well. 
uh, you could just have a hooped bivy if you wanted. The, the, the shelter possibilities are endless. Of course it would count as one of your your items, of course, whereas this is just sort of a lighter weight, more minimalist option. I thought, well, I'll start with it anyway. So, yeah, it's something I'm gonna I'm gonna be practicing over the sort of the coming weeks um, that we're locked down for. So, alcoholic beverages for tonight. As I say, these aren't included in the list because they're consumables. First up, I'm gonna have this one first. It's a. I don't know if you can see that probably not too well I'll just read it to you anyway it's from the wild beer company and it's called Bibble it's a pale ale uh, plus big body plus mosaic hops it's 4.2 percent so it's not that strong drink wildly different Bibble means to drink regularly in old Somerset dialect this is our everyday pa everyday pale ale for regular bibbling <laughs> so cheers everyone Oh, nah, this is why I had this one first to get it out of the way. First taste and it's it's just, nah, it's not for me. Oh, it's got a really metallic, bitter taste to it and there's no fruity taste or anything whatsoever. That is just, I'm going to have to give that one a 2 out of 10. And that's being generous to be honest with you i probably won't even finish that i might even go in the house and see if my old dot will finish it if she wants it she probably won't want it though nah, that is rank but like i say someone will probably like it out there we'll skip that one then and we'll have something that i know is going to be good and that is a copperberg rose i love these ciders four percent um, I have reviewed these before, so but any of you that are, are new to the channel, I'll uh, I'll read it out to you now. If you are new, thank you for tuning in. Whatever you say, and yeah, cheers. Anyway, <laughs> welcome. Um, Copperberg Rose is an apple cider, pink in colour and refreshingly fruity to taste. We hope you enjoy this very special cider as much as we do. Skull, which apparently means cheers. Here we go. Oh. Yep, first sip satisfaction. So much better. I don't know what I'd give it. I can't remember what I gave it before. It's definitely worthy of an 8 out of 10 minimum, so I'll leave it at that anyway. And the final drink that we'll be having is this one. I think I've reviewed this once before as well so it's from Adnams in Southwold up on the Suffolk coast and it's a cu cuckoo melon sour so it's like cucumber and melon 4% and it's got kind of like a I think like a matte finish the tin it's really nice to touch I really I do like the design of the, the tin the first time I had it it was really nice the second time not so nice so excuse me starting early so we'll see what it's like this third time but yeah we'll have a look at that later on just thought I'd get all of this out of the way first yes yeah, so I've got that uh, ration pack uh, menu number three it's an eight hour ration pack so it's got 1500 calories worth of, of grub in it um, the main meal is probably going to divide opinion again. I will not say any more about it. It is halal chicken and dal. Do you pronounce it? I don't know. Anyway, it's a 300 gram pouch, so that's your main meal. There's a flameless ration heater that comes with it to heat your your meal up. And uh, lemon flavoured energy drink powder probably won't have that tonight otherwise I won't sleep some stem ginger oat biscuits a pack of nuts mixed nuts so you've got peanuts, almonds and cashews and they'll be unsalted and they won't be dry roasted they'll be plain as so they're not bad in a pinch. 
you've got a fruit flavoured energy drink powder and that one is lime that's quite nice that flavour then you get a little uh, oh excuse me again date and strawberry fruit bar I quite like them you don't get a lot of them though they're quite sort of small bum wipes as usual <laughs> always useful um, another little mixed fruit puree the yellow cap again apple mango and banana um, I always seem to get that one there's the little qu quiz thing like the feedback form that if you're in the in the armed forces you fill that out you send it back and you can win you can win a 200 quid Amazon voucher not bad so uh, yeah don't fill that out if you're not in the forces because they will yeah they'll bollock you and then your accessory pack is this massive uh, pretty sturdy sealable bag so you know you could collect water in that if you needed to or it's to put your rubbish in so you get a really sturdy spork so it's like British Army spork those things are absolutely brilliant um, one of my 20 items is actually a titanium spork as well so if I'd have known I was having a ration pack that had a good spork in it I probably wouldn't really need that but oh well got some chewing gum two pieces and that is peppermint then we've got a three-in-one tea which I'll be having tonight and a three-in-one coffee which I'll be having in the morning and a big wet wipe as well these three-in-one teas and coffees are actually well in my opinion really tasty I quite like them so that is all the food that we've got okay I'm gonna give my mates a call and enjoy the evening and I'll show you the rest of the stuff a little bit later on cheers I thought I'd make a start on some of the ration pack I'm gonna have the halal chicken and dal however you pronounce it and what I'll probably do is use the the FRH or flameless ration heater so if any of you are sort of new to the world of ration packs I kind of think they're a useful thing to keep in your bag along with you know your stove that you're using because should your stove fail or if the weather's too bad to use the stove for whatever reason you can't use it one of these would uh, get you out of a sticky situation of course you, know, you can use these inside a shelter I mean okay it's going to create a lot of steam but you could just sort of poke it out the door and then and still sort of cook cook a meal basically and then once you've used them you, they actually still produce quite a lot of heat and they act as almost like a, a hand warmer so you could stick that at the bottom of your sleeping bag you know just sort of screw it up in a ball and it would still keep keep on giving off heat for a while so they're really useful to have and don't take up a lot of space they weigh next to nothing and you can buy them really cheap online as well like in bulk I remember when I did uh, the Devil's Dyke wild camp or aborted wild camp during Storm Deirdre I did that with Ben from London Outdoors a while ago now and that was horrific that we had to abandon that and that was it was really really dangerous it was it's pretty stupid of us to be honest to go out in that sort of weather and you, you you literally we just about managed to get the tents set up and then sort of had to get inside the tents we were soaked <coughs> like the inside of the tents was was getting wet as well and you know, we couldn't cook anything uh, so we couldn't have any hot food and that was like what you really needed because otherwise like hypothermia could set in and things like that but luckily I had one of these in my bag and I managed to do myself like a, a beans and burgers wayfarer meal and it was a morale boost and I think it gave me that energy sort of and sort of confidence boost to go do you know what let's get packed up let's, let's you know abandon this one and try and make it back 
to the cars which was about a mile or two away it was quite a way away and it well it doesn't sound that far but in that situation in the dark and you can't see a hand in front of your face and the wind was is the strongest winds I've ever been in and a lot of rain it looked like the roads were flooding and you know we literally nearly couldn't find the South Downs way to get to get back to the cars so it, it don't sound that far but you know in those sort of situations you know they found people dead and they were like a quarter of a mile or a few hundred meters from you know their tent or a bothy you know they've gone outside to go to the toilet or something and got lost in the storm and you know they've died of exposure or something and they've found them and they literally weren't that far away so it just goes to show you what can happen anyway but I, I do believe one of these did save my neck a little bit on that trip so I won't go on any more about them anyway so yeah uh, halal chicken and dal I'll have the 3 in 1 tea because I want to have a hot drink before I get my bivy bag and to go with the tea I'll have the stem ginger oat biscuits and then I'll save all the rest for a little bit of breakfast in the morning I may well mix the lemon and lime drinks together sort of to make kind of like a flat sprite <laughs> so I'm using the little Trangia alcohol stove and my Esbit triangle because it, it sits nicely inside there and it actually raises it off the ground slightly as well because it clicks into these these little slots here so that's quite a useful feature that you can use these Esbit triangles as a solid fuel stove as well that's what it's originally for I still put it down on a little bit of tin foil just to just to be on the safe side and it's starting to roar into life gives off quite a lot of steam and it will be hot to touch you've got to be careful and you see that's the heat pad has swollen up there that was quite good that one it must have just escaped out of the edges there so that's quite good you want to leave a little gap like that to let the steam escape otherwise it goes boom and it bursts not that that matters really you can quickly reseal it it will still cook it to be honest but you then leave that for probably five to ten minutes once it's because now that it's you know it's, it's come to life now it's sort of you know it, it's cooking it's heating the meal up so five to ten minutes you don't want to leave it too long because it will stop and then it will start cooling down and then of course your food gets cold again so some of the MREs come with like a cardboard sheath that you you put the the heater and the meal in. I suppose it keeps some of the heat in. It allows you to handle it safely as well. But you could make some kind of insulating cosy that would do the same sort of job, and it would just keep it you know warmer for longer. Yeah, and then once that's done, take it out of the bag, tear open your your meal, and it should be you know good enough to eat. If yeah, you know, if it's not quite hot enough and you you have it like piping hot then you know you could just put it on your on your stove, put the, the food pouch sealed in your pot and you know warm it for a little bit longer. So for my next alcoholic drink of the evening, we're going to have that Adnams Cuckoo Melon Sour, it's 4%. Adnams of course is the famous brewery based in Southwold, up on the Suffolk coast, it's lovely there. And the Adnams do do a Wild Wave Cider, which is really good actually. Don't know if they do any other types of cider though. I'd like to see I'd like to see them do more to be honest because they mainly just do like pale ales, beers, sours, that sort of stuff. What's in the can? Cuckoo melon sour. Expect the unexpected. 
pale gold in colour with cucumber and melon aromas and a fresh crunchy bite. So the style is kettle sour, hops, huel melon, malts, lager malt, IBU 15 and it says it goes great with grilled fish or a Caesar salad. I can see that but that's not what we're having tonight. We've got, uh, what's it, chicken and dal so probably not ideal anyway cool sort of design to it and it's got this kind of I don't know, like a matte sort of textured finish to it which is quite nice had these twice before hmm the first time I had this it was amazing and I drank it like in about a minute it was amazing I'd say you can taste more melon than cucumber and then it has got quite a sour taste to it not bitter but sour it has got like a vegetable kind of vibe about it, I suppose the cucumber in it but it's definitely different you, I can't imagine there's anything else that tastes tastes like that really I'd give it a 5 out of 10 just average it's you know it's different and that's what gets it the 5 but at the same time I wouldn't want to drink a lot of those I'd want something a bit sweeter after a while but it's nowhere near as bitter or, or as sour as a lot of other like pale ales and sours and beers in general really so yeah yeah I've got quite a limited palate when it comes to things like that so this is one of the few things that I can drink that I'm like that's alright really you know give me a cider any day the ginger stem oat biscuits have actually survived relatively intact actually so you get five of them so let's try dunking them in the tea so I think they'll all biscuits taste better dunked in tea, let's be honest. Mm. I'm not a massive fan of like ginger flavoured stuff, but there's something quite warming about it, it's nice. So they work well with the tea, they try them on their own, they're good, but I prefer them, prefer them in the tea. The halal chicken and dal is done it seems like it's cooked all the way through it it's pretty hot I don't know if you're going to be able to see any of that but oh, everything in ration pack meals is always orange never had a chicken and dal before actually I'll point that out it's quite baby foody mm, big bits of chicken doesn't taste very spicy. I don't know if it's meant to be. No idea. I'm not a, a curry fan myself. I think I mentioned this in another video. Since I've been eating ration packs, my uh, my f taste in food has expanded, has, has broadened my horizons in terms of food. I'm not saying I'd go down the local curry house and have a curry, but if it was in a ration pack, I would eat it or I would have some of it at least whereas before I just used to you know completely turn my nose up at curries I mean it's nowhere near as good as that halal beef chilli con carne I had when I did my first garden camp that was really nice this is hmm it's alright and that chicken tikka masala can't, um, did it have chickpeas in it? I can't remember. That was okay. That was a little bit better than this. The consistency of this is good. Like I say, it's very baby foody and sort of soft, apart from the bits of chicken. I suppose it could do with having some rice with it. I think it's one of the things, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. It's like Marmite, which I hate. <laughs> but a chicken tastes good quality, though. So, yeah, that's not bad. So I'm going to finish this off, oh it's a little bit spicy now actually I'm going to finish this off it's another late one, it's gone 3am and I've literally only just got off the phone to Mark we've been 
chatting away. He's he's uh, camping in his garden. His nature hike tagger one tent. He's had a fire. He's done some cooking. The setup seems seems pretty good. The the tarp has sagged a little bit, but seems all right. Yeah, I'm in the OEX Bush Pro Bivy because I limited myself to 20 items. I've only got the one ground sheet so I've got like a silver kind of aluminium coated ground sheet then I've got of course the Bush Pro Bivy inside that I've got climate inflatable pad I've got my go light down sleeping bag a silk sleeping bag liner a little X bed pillow because I sort of got to about 15, 16 items and then was like oh, I don't really need anything else so I've got four extra things so I threw in the liner and the pillow just for a bit of comfort and yeah, I'd normally have a, a silver foam pad as well underneath everything so I'd normally have like two, pad, two sleeping pads um, and two ground sheets and so I've, I've got rid of those and yeah I feel right actually the the inflatable mat climate mat seems to be fine on its own enough yawning I'll see you in the morning a.m. now I slept really well last night I was almost too warm so I had to sort of take a few layers off but once I did that I was absolutely fine it was actually a really really mild night normally normal faceless bivvies I just can't get to sleep in them uh, I get really broken sleep whereas I think I'm getting slightly more used to being in a bivvy I think it's one of those things, if you don't do it for a while, you get out of practice. I find having a tarp as well definitely makes a big difference because it kind of still feels like you're in a tent then. Anyway, and considering this was like a 20 item challenge that I set myself, I don't feel like B 
been uncomfortable or missed out on any creature comforts or anything. So I've had uh, breakfast. It's a strange sort of breakfast, as you just saw. It was the last bits of the ration pack. I'm just finishing the coffee off. Which I'm slowly coming round to liking. That's not a bad coffee, that. Either way, depending on what you think of the rules and what should count as one item and what shouldn't, it doesn't really matter because I think it's definitely made me think about what equipment I'll take on walks and wild camps in future and it's made me kind of realise how little you actually need. You, know, you can get by with, with real you know, bare minimum stuff and I'll be the first one to admit that for a while I've been carrying far too much stuff and I've been bringing like backups of things and some of that I do agree with I still think you should have like a couple of spares of things in case things go wrong but really you've just got to find stuff that's reliable that you know that you can trust that you've used before and then go I'll just use that like stoves for example I always used to take two stoves um, in case one went wrong and that has happened to me before but I think you've got to look at things that are like reliable gas isn't always reliable as I've found out in the past but things like meths or gel fuel stoves like BCB fire dragons stuff like that there's no there's nothing there's nothing on the stove that can go wrong as long as you've got enough fuel you're fine and yeah things like lights i was taking far too many lights i mean at one point at my heaviest i was taking two head torches uh like a lantern to hang up in the shelter and then like two little mini key ring lights and you just think you don't need all of that one head torch with you know a spare battery for it and a little mini key ring light would do you and that's it so going forwards that's what i'm going to do but so yeah it was a, it was a good experiment all in all so let's get all this stuff packed away and i will show you what i used that's everything dismantled and laid out on the lawn and as you can see it's not a lot of kit at all basically um, this is where, as I say, like there's going to be a bone of contention with a lot of people. They'll say, well, some stuff, Tom, you shouldn't count as one item. I don't know. Either way, that is still a lot less gear than I normally take. And I know it's going to be a lot, lot lighter. And probably the people that are saying that are probably the people that don't get out and even wild camp themselves. So the armchair wild camper. It's probably easier to just point at things with one of the walking poles so that there is my blue trespass down jacket so i wore that as an extra layer at night next to it is a pair of wool army arctic weather socks so kind of like my warm socks to put on in the evening and what before i get in the bivy pair of OEX merino wool men's thermal leggings once again for evening wear just to, you know keep the chill off me legs because I didn't bring my softy trousers for this one because they're bulky heavy and in some ways they're a luxury item then I've got a little thin kind of thermal long sleeve base layer as well a little rab hat now you did see in the video I had a different hat on at one point as well that's because I started off with this one and it felt really tight on my head so I swapped it for a sort of a looser more comfy hat but then just for the sake of the experiment I went back to that one for when it came time to go to sleep next door to that is that orange thing that's my titanium spork long handled toke spork a little pen knife my through night head torch with a spare battery as well I thought that counts as one item so it's got two batteries there then that little black pouch there that's my Esbit uh, folding triangle stove 
which I basically use as a frame to hold the Trangia meth burner. Inside that it's got a bit of tin foil and a little paper book of matches and I've counted that as one item. Then this is the one that's the real bone of contention. My cook set and the Trangia alcohol stove. You've got a 250ml bottle of meths. I'm counting that as one item because you can't have a stove without fuel. So what I'll do is I'll show you what that is. So inside the pot is the pot, a windproof lighter, and then my mug. Inside that I've got a little pack of tissues, and then I'll get to it. At the bottom is my Trangier alcohol stove. So that was the, the only stove I took. And as you can see, it all fits into one another. I can actually fit the pen knife in there as well, so you could sort of chalk that off as an item, but I'm not going to because that's taking the piss. But I'm counting all of that as one item, <laughs> so I'm sure you'll get in the comments and say, No, Tom, that's, that's cheating, but anyways that's what I've done there so that's one item is the stove and the pots next door to that is two Nalgene one litre water bottles once again I'm counting that as one item I'm not counting each bottle as a separate item we've got the trekking poles there's the OEX one at the far end there and then this is a decathlon one that I'm using as a pointy thing um, the whole setup was on this silver aluminium coated ground sheet and that's what I put underneath the bivvy I, I didn't want to go with Tyvek because I figured the silver would bounce my body heat back up so I thought it's a dual purpose then there's a 75 litre OEX waterproof dry bag which I used as a liner for my Osprey Talon 44 litre rucksack which fit everything with space to spare. Now I'm counting those two as one item as well because that that dry bag as I say acted as a liner so it goes inside the rucksack when I'm carrying stuff to keep everything dry but then at night all the stuff I wasn't using like the rucksack I put inside the OEX dry bag sealed it up and put it under my head as an extra pillow so once again you know, I've sort of bent the rules a little bit there. I'm counting that as one item. Moving on, we've got my Go Light down sleeping bag. It's, I know it's under a kilo. It could be eight or nine hundred grams. Uh, I think I paid about 115 quid for it. It's the most I've spent on a sleeping bag. Second hand off eBay, but it's brilliant. And I think it might be, it might be three season. If it's two season, it's warm for two season. I've used it in winter and it's absolutely fine. Next door to that is a silk mummy sleeping bag liner. So I can just sort of give that bag an extra, an extra degree, um, an extra degree, well, an extra degree or an extra season of warmth. The Exped inflatable pillow. It's a luxury item. Again, I was going to go without a pillow. The climate insulated static V pad it is quite heavy it's heavier than my normal inflatable pads I use I think it's about 600 and something grams I don't know I've no idea but still uh, but it's just so comfy and it's so warm next door to that is the OEX Bush Pro bivvy and that's the lightest bivvy I own I own quite a few bivvies it's a strange fetish it breathes pretty well, providing you don't have your head inside the bivvy. You know, if you leave a little gap for your your mouth so you can breathe, it's it works fine. I've never had any condensation issues with it. And it's quite spacious. It's got an internal storage pocket uh, for like valuables you need to get to during the night. And packs down really small. And I even like the colour. <laughs> and then finally next door to that is the main shelter and that was some cheap combat army poncho tarp thing 
Um, I've had it for years, it's slowly falling apart, so I'm in the process of looking for a new poncho tarp. I like poncho tarps because the minimalist vibe about them, and B, the main thing, is that serves as your rain gear as well as your shelter. So it's like, it's, you know, multi-purpose. So inside that I've got the tarp, uh, a couple of little guy lines, and five pegs. I'm not including food in this kit list. I'm not counting camera equipment in this, so the tripod, the phone, the microphone I'm using, the camera light, the tripod for that, the battery packs to charge all that up, I'm not counting that. You wouldn't normally count that stuff. As you can see, I haven't included a first aid kit in this. I usually carry a really, really basic, tiny little first aid kit with just a few little essentials, nothing, nothing major really. I kind of figure with first aid incidents, it's either going to be something minor or something really fucking serious. If it's really serious, it's going to be out of your control anyway and it's going to be a case of, you know, call the emergency services, search and rescue, that sort of thing, really. Call for help. You're, you're not going to be able to deal with it yourself, so I just carry the basics, really. You know, plasters, pills, you know, a couple of little bandages, just, you know, some blister kit stuff. That's it, really. Nothing, nothing too fancy. A little bit of... Um, multi-purpose soap like anti-back stuff a little bit of sun cream I've got a little burn sachet as well like a burn gel thing that you put on because of course I'm using a stove but other than that that's it and I usually just keep that in my pocket anyway so that's the end of this video and a look at this 20 item garden camp which you could use for wild camping so I hope you enjoyed the video get in the comments let us know what you think I'm sure I'm probably going to get some stick for trying to count a few items that nestle together as one item but you know that's still probably the lightest kit i've gone with or the most basic anyway so i'm really pleased with that and i'm just going to keep practicing this during this lockdown really it gives me something to focus on it keeps me sane and when i eventually go back you know to wild camping and long distance walking this is going to pay off with any luck so yeah i'm just going to sort of change the kit around, different rucksacks, different shelters, different sleeping bags, different stoves and and I'll sort of weigh each thing and sort of see what comes out as the lightest really. So I'm looking forward to it anyway. So yeah thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves, look after each other, stay safe everyone and I'll see you on the next one.